Hi, I'm Lucy Hughes, UX lead at Google Play. Today, I'm going to walk you through all the new features our teams have built to help you power your growth on Play, as well as highlighting some important dates and deadlines for you to be aware of. We'll talk about improvements for trust and safety, tools to boost your app quality and improve monetization, some updates for games and a new store listing certificate course. So let's get started. Google Play is committed to providing a safe and secure platform that protects both you, app and games businesses, and the billions of people who trust Google Play to discover the latest Android content. Earlier this year, we shared details about the upcoming data safety section in the Play Store, which will let users know the type of data your app collects and stores and how that data is used. By giving you a way to showcase your approach to privacy and security, we're not only building user trust, we're helping people make informed decisions about the apps they install and use. Users will see the new data safety section in Play Store starting in February. We know that some of you will need more time to assess your apps and coordinate with multiple teams. So we're giving you until April before your apps must have this section completed and approved. You can start filling out the required data safety form in Play Console now. We encourage you to get started early and submit your information for review as soon as possible before the April deadline. For more information, including guidance on how to fill out the form, you can read our Help Centre article or watch our session, Get Prepared for the Data Safety section. You can find the link for the session in the video description below. The new Play Integrity API helps protect your apps and games from abuse and attacks. It helps you detect risky or untrustworthy interactions with your app, so your backend server can decide whether or not to trust the interaction. At launch, the API will send you three signals. Is this your unmodified binary? Is this a genuine Play install? And is this a genuine Android device running Google Play services? If any of those signals are not what you expect, your server can decide what your app should do next to reduce the risk, such as asking the user for verification or reducing access to functionality. We've been working closely with developers to test the API, which is already being used in production to protect apps and games. The Play Integrity API will be rolling out to everyone over the next few months. We'll be publishing a preview of the integration guide very soon at the URL shown on the screen, along with information about migrating to the new API from safety net device attestation and play licensing. To learn more, watch our session Play Integrity API, which is linked in the video description. Another major contributor to your app success in Google Play is quality. In fact, nearly three quarters of five-star reviews on Google Play mention the quality of the app experience in terms of performance, design, and usability. Because quality is so important, we're constantly making changes to surface the higher quality apps in the Play Store. To make the most of Google Play, you need to invest in the quality of your app, but what does app quality really mean? App quality includes the overall experience of the app, its technical quality and the quality of your listing on Google Play. So to help you maximize your success, we've released several updates to help you improve the performance of your app. Let's start with your technical quality. First, we're making it easier for you to spot new issues with improvements to Android Vitals. Your most recent data is now more visible to help you spot issues faster. And we've added trends, filters, and app version information to help you quickly identify the source of the issue. These improvements were made possible by some new capabilities available in Android 10. So look out for new features soon. We're also making some changes to ratings and reviews to make them more indicative of the experience that each user can expect. Starting in November, users on phones will start to see ratings specific to their registered country. Then, in early 2022, users will see ratings specific to the device that they're on, including form factors such as tablets, Chromebooks and wearables. You can preview your location-specific and device-specific ratings in Play Console today. We encourage you to check them out now so you have time to make any app quality improvements before the new ratings are shown to Play Store users. When we look at quality, we also consider the reach of your high quality experience. That's why we recently launched a new tool in console called Reach and Devices to help you understand which features or fixes would help you reach the most users on Google Play. 
By understanding your user and issue distribution, you can make more informed decisions about which specs to build for, where to launch, and what to test to make the biggest impact. Stay tuned for more in this space in the next year. Of course, one of the biggest aspects of growing your business on Google Play is earning money from your Apple game. This year, we've made changes to help you monetize your apps and reinvest in your business, offering you more options and flexibility. Earlier this year, we announced that the service fee for the first $1 million in earnings is now 15%. Today, more than 99% of all developers are eligible for a service fee of 15% or less. If you haven't already enrolled, please do so at the link shown on the screen. The 15% rate is effective from the day that you enroll. We're also constantly adding new features to the billing library, including new ways for users to pay, subscription promotion capabilities, purchase attribution for games, and improvements to purchase reliability and security. Today, I'm excited to announce one of those new features coming in billing library version four, in-app messaging. Today, subscription users that go into payment decline often aren't aware of it or experience too much friction to fix their payment. The best place for users to learn about their payment decline and fix it is in the app itself. But too often we hear from developers that it's a lot of work to determine the user's payment state and show the right messaging. That's why we're announcing a new API that can detect whether a user is in payment decline and show a helpful message right in your app. This allows users to immediately fix the payment without leaving the app to go to the Play Store. Best of all, the integration is super easy. It's just a few lines of code. We've already seen positive results from our early access partners. On average, developers saw a 99% improvement in subscription recovery for users who saw the message. In-app messaging will be available in the next billing library release, so stay tuned for more information. In order to help you benefit from these features and keep your infrastructure modern and up to date, we've established a yearly cadence for updating to the minimum billing library version. As a reminder, all updates to existing apps must use billing library version three or newer by November the 1st. After November 1st, you won't be able to publish apps that use older integrations, AIDL, billing library version one or billing library version two. Apps already in the Play Store can continue to be downloaded and process in-app purchases. However, any subsequent app releases will require Billing Library version 3 or newer. Updating to Billing Library version 3 or newer is simple and requires just a few updates to your code. More information about the changes can be found in the release notes in our developer documentation. We've also made improvements for our game developers. Now, in early access, the updated sign-in API for Play Game services drastically simplifies the sign-in implementation. In fact, it's now just a single line of code. It gives you a convenient way to sign in your players and save their game progression. You can then retrieve player game data to allow returning players to continue playing from their last save point from any device. You can integrate popular gaming features such as achievements and leaderboards. We've also simplified the setup for users, combining the Google Play Games install and profile creation into one step. This allows users to get back to their game more quickly, even if they don't have Play Games installed. We're streamlining the process of opting in to auto sign in for an even smoother experience for returning users. But that's not all. Needing to have the Google Play Games app installed is creating friction for some users. So starting in 2022, Play Game services will no longer require installation. This change will allow 2 billion users to sign in to your Play Game services enabled games with a zero touch experience. Stay tuned for more details. In the meantime, you can express your interest in the Play Game services early access program on our developer site. And last but not least, I'm pleased to announce the launch of the Google Play Store listing certificate. This new program is designed to help app marketers demonstrate their proficiency and skills in Play Store listing best practices. To get certified, you can take our online training at Google Play Academy and learn best practices to help you best tell your app or game story. You'll learn key skills that will help you drive growth through high quality and policy compliance store listings.
after the training, take the exam to get an industry recognised certificate. You can use your certificate to promote yourself to the communities, projects and employers that are important to you. Make yourself stand out, whether it's in your own organisation or in the industry. We hope you take advantage of all these tools, features and programmes to grow your businesses on Google Play. Please continue sharing your feedback so we can continue to build the tools you need to power your growth on Play. Thanks for being part of the Google Play community.